Hello everybody, Bill Thornton, SoCal Saber. Thank you for stopping by for another episode of Spinning. It is Saturday, August 17th, and we're going to take a look at what I listened to this week on my vinyl albums and CDs. Before we do, please go down there and hit that like button. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. Put some comments down there. What albums do you like the best? Do you have any of these that I'm going to show today? If so, do you like them or not dislike them? So we're going to get things started here with a whatnot addition to my collection. And as it turns out to be, it is Robert Palmer's Riptide from 1985. It was his eighth studio album. The album peaked at number five in the UK charts and number eight in the Billboard charts. The single Addicted to Love was accompanied by an iconic and much imitated music video directed by in which Palmer's is surrounded by a BB of nearly identical clad, heavily made up female musicians, either mimicking or mocking the painting style of Patrick Nigel. This ended up to be my second in my collection. You know, I didn't get, I got carried away and didn't check it out. I bit on it. I won it because I bit on it because it's in really good shape. This came from a, on whatnot from a guy that picked up a really nice 1980 collection that the guy kept in real condi good, great condition. Look at the inner, how nice it is. So I'll take a review. I'll take a look at both of them. I'll keep the best one, and then I'll send my, the other one over to my grandson who's starting to put together some albums and now I wanted to show you this look at the uh, vinyl on this one how nice it is I uh, always worried about that ring light when I'm showing you the vinyl but I see a lot of other people demonstrate that so that they can get a better look at the vinyl and, uh, so I tried it today. If it, if you don't like it or is it bothersome, please uh, let me know in the remarks so I can change my ways. So that was Riptide, the 1985 album by Robert Palmer that started the week off on a good note. And everybody addicted to love. You remember those little girls, the ladies that were behind them? That was pretty. That was pretty neat. I really like that stuff. Okay, and here we go with uh, second one of the week. Also. In from whatnot. Is Abandoned Luncheonette by Hall and Oates from 1973. This is a 1977 reissue. It was their second studio album by the pop rock duo. The album reached number 33 on the Billboard charts. And Billboard's top LPs and, try, and featured one of their first major hits, She's Gone, which found success after a 76 reissue. 29 years later, the album was certified platinum for selling over a million copies. I do like Hollow Notes. I have other things by Hollow Notes in my collection. There was a, an inner sleeve with it here, which is still in pretty good shape. This was in good shape, too, from what not. A little bend down here. But I still would give this a VG plus. <clears throat> and then uh, the sad thing about it is the recently, and I haven't read up on it, I don't know why it is, but there's big arguments between the, these two guys and lawsuits and all kinds of things going on. That's a shame. They had such a great career. You know, and I don't know what they're fighting about. Probably for music rights and who gets the most money and stuff like that. That, Unfortunately, a lot of musicians get into, or a lot of groups get into also. So, Especially with their managers back in the day who used to try to rip them off. And uh, that was Abandoned Luncheonette from Hall & Oates from 1973. Okay, moving on is uh, one that I bought locally and uh, I got the hype sticker on my my own sleeve. I had to remove it from the original 
but I'll read this for you. This is the 50th anniversary limited edition high quality pressing on 180 gram double vinyl half speed mastered at Abbey Rhodes Studio. And what is it? This is the 50th anniversary of <clears throat> Tom Waits' debut album, Closing Time. So if you've been following me, I just I probably only got into Tom Waits like four years, three three to five years ago, I would guess. I really like him. So I do add stuff from him into my collection. And I did since this was the fiftieth anniversary of his debut. I wanted to pick it up. I don't know there was doesn't look like there was a, something on the, the label here. That's kind of strange. I'm gonna have to check on that. See this little mark right here? I don't know if you can see it there, but I don't know what that's from. Okay, and it is a gatefold. There are no inners with it. I wish that they had put a nice inner in it since it was the 50th anniversary. But it did come on some nice black polyline protective sleeves which I always like when they want to protect their records come on the label and with his name on it real nice and in really good shape this was only released in 2023 and was only open for the first time this particular copy this week when I listened to it so that was the 50th anniversary of closing time by Tom Waits his initial solo his debut album so that was pretty cool. I, I really enjoyed it, the double album. I do a lot of album listening when I'm doing reading, and so I'll stop reading when I hear some, something that I really like, and I stopped quite a few times during that one. The next album that I got, I won and from whatnot. During the, when they're, they're doing sales, occasionally most of the salespeople put up a, uh, a, a giveaway. You don't even know, really know what you're getting on the giveaway. Sometimes it's old. I've gotten old. But this one here was a brand new sealed copy of <clears throat> Vulgar Display of Power from Pantera. This is a 2021 reissue of their 92 album. It was their sixth studio album. And it was well received by critics and fans. It's Pantera's highest selling album to date would eventually be certified double platinum. It's often considered by some as the most influential, Holly, one of the most influential heavy metal albums of the 90s. Well, it was heavy metal. And you, you've, heard, you've heard me talk before when they talk about hard rock and that, and they really didn't think it was hard. This one was. This one was very hard, very heavy. Got a nice inner in here. And to the point where I don't mind a lot of hard rock and stuff, as you guys have been following that, uh, replayability of this one for me is not very good because I didn't care for it. You know, you just run rock and heavy metal, and you know, so half the times he was sounding like he was trying to rap, and I didn't like his rapping and whatever it was. But if it's their number one, they sub double platinum. I mean, a lot of people like it. It's not a really cool silver splatter vinyl pretty cool pretty nice it's in the it's in the, the collection when I'm not around I'm sure somebody in the family will pick this one and they'll enjoy it I know my son Paul would have would loved it all right so now we're getting into where I got down to I got the CDs for the week in the first CD that I listened to was number 16 in the collection and it's All the Best by Paul McCartney. 17 really good songs on here <clears throat> and there. This was out in 1977. It was the second official compilation of McCartney's music after 78's Wings Greatest. Uh, let's see what else note I got here. It reached number two in the UK and it kept off the top position by George Michael's debut solo album, Faith. In America, the compilation peaked at number 62, although it was eventually certified 
Double platinum in America. Wow. There's a little booklet. I can see by the, the lighting I have on today that you can actually see the text. I am working on my lighting and sound, folks. It's uh, been having some issues lately. You know, on this uh, CD, he has two songs that were two duets with other performers that were major hits. First one I'll talk about is Ebony and Ivory with him and Stevie Wonders. What a big hit that was in trying to promote peace and, and harmony in the world. The other one was Say, Say, Say with Michael Jackson. Now, the CDs don't, don't look so good on here. They look like they got color in them, but they really don't. It's just a reflection. If this is with this new lighting, you can still make it out, though. Say, 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 Michael Jackson. This, this came out in 1987, this CD. And I'm surprised that it's the song is even on there. Why? From what I've read, you know, McCartney and Michael Jackson got along real well, and they were, you know, fairly good friends, and they did things, and then they did the, the, the thing. But in 1985, Michael Jackson bought the rights to all the Beatles music. And Paul McCartney felt like he was backdoored on that one. And uh, I guess that was, like, really the end of that friendship that went down the hill. And Michael Jackson paid $47.5 million for that Beatles music. And I'm sure he made his money back, especially his estate did after he passed away. They sold it to, uh, I forget what company, it was a big company that bought them, bought the rights for the Beatles music for like over $700 million. That is just crazy money. And they're still making a lot of money because the Beatles albums and music still sell a lot. All right, next album, CD for the day, or the week, is number 17, The Age of the Innocents, by Don Henley. It's released in 1989, and this is his third solo album. You know, he was, uh, Henley was the uh, co-lead vocalist and drummer for the Eagles. The album is Henley's best selling, selling over 6 million copies in the U.S. alone, peaking at number 8. The album featured three top 40 singles The Age of Innocence, The Heart of the Matter, and The Last Wor Worthless Evening. They reached 8, 21, and 21. 8, 21, and 21, respectively. It also featured New York Minute, which reached number 48 on the charts. Really good. There's another one I really liked on there. If Dirt Were Dollars. <coughs> yeah, I'm uh, like the Dirt Were Dollars. I'm not going to sing for you guys. So don't get scared. There's the CD, you know, the regular gray CD album. Nothing special on it by Geffen. Let's see if I get this closer. Can you see it better when it's closer? Uh, this new lighting is, this is the only thing that affected it really a lot was this. All right, so that was Don Henley, The End of the Innocence, number 17 in my CD collection. And so we're getting to the last thing of the week, and it's when I, where I take the next album out that has been in the collection for a long time. And this week's was number 29. And it was, is, The Best of Bread, Volume 2. It was a 1974 compilation, but this is a 77 reissue. And it's very good. Uh, I really liked it. It is a gatefold. We'll take a look at the inside. You can see the guys. It has an inner with it. 
advertising the complete collection of bread and David Gates's solo album. I wonder if that was any good. I might have to stream that just for the heck of it. Uh, I this is the second. Com that's the bread. As I said, it's volume two, so it had to be the second. You know the the hits that I remembered. I remembered that I liked on this one it was guitar guitar man. Audbury, Sweet Surrender, you know, and he's a good lad. But honestly, I think I really liked the first rendition, um, first compilation, which was just the best of bread. And uh, I think probably because it had more hits on it. I buy compilations compilation back in the day, I guess, so that I have their hits and everything. So even though I enjoyed this one, I didn't like it quite as well as I did their first one. But this is really in good shape too. Let's see if we can get a better look at the vinyl. Yep, this is uh, 47 years old and in real good shape and played very nicely. So that was The Best of Bread Volume 2 from 90, 70, 1974 and my copy was 77. Well, that was it for this week. I hope you all enjoyed it. Tell your friends about my music collection, what I do on Saturdays, and show you what I listen to. We have a nice fair following starting here, and I'd like to get an increase. So, so Cal Sabre saying, thank you very much, folks. Take care of yourselves out there. Be kind to each other, and stay safe.